was this guy he was in his community and he was saying that oh he had the idea of making a borehole system in such a way that when he puts something into the ground and winds like a fan or something it's going to make the ground be able to bring up water so when he was talking about it he hi guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time seeing my face my name is agnes and i'm a medical student studying in chris crusher so today's video we are going to be talking about something very important i'm very sure by the title and the thumbnail you already have an idea of what i'm going to be speaking on and i know that this topic is something that a lot of young people need to hear of so if you've come across this video just be patient watch it to the end and get all you can from it okay yeah so let's dive right into today's video the topic of today is self-doubt and how we as young adults always like most of the times are doubting ourselves and the first thing i would like to talk about before i go deep into the topic is the definition of self-doubt so according to me self-doubt is simply when you do not have confidence in your abilities or you do not trust the god-given abilities that have been built on the inside of you for example you're an artist and you draw so well but because you've not yet been known like the big names like Leonardo da Vinci or all of those big painters or people when someone tells you that oh you draw so well you just like oh my god no they want me that's Nigerian English saying don't don't blow my trumpet like who am I kind of something like that or for example you make videos you're a content creator and people are like ah you speak so well like whenever you speak you're dropping wisdom and because you're not really having all the influence you think you're supposed to have if you are that good you begin to doubt yourself or your student and just because you failed in some courses you you've like tamed yourself as oh i am dull or something and that's like there are many examples of self-doubt and there are just too many you can look at yourself you can look at people around you and be able to spot that uh, oh this person has been doubting themselves in certain areas and the next thing i'm going to talk about now are the reasons or the causes for self-doubt the first thing when i was thinking about this topic that came to my mind as a reason for self-doubt is failure you know let's say for example you're an a student you're a high achiever so you always get a's any exam you write you ace it then all of a sudden <laughs> you write one particular exam and it's like maybe you almost failed the exam or you failed itself and because of that it's it's like oh am i really who i think i am or i'm just lying to myself you begin to doubt yourself and doubt it that you're really smart to yourself you are like a failure or somebody who knows nothing at all you know one thing about failure is it is that it is it is one thing that can really sap out confidence so quickly let's say for instance you're speaking in public and because you made a mistake or you forgot your lines because of that one event you are scared now you cannot believe in yourself that oh if I take the stage, I'll be able to say everything I want to say and leave that place and be successful on that stage. Because of that one event that you've encountered, it's now like, oh, anything I do, I'll fail. That's one of the main causes of self-doubt, failure. Failure in one area affecting other areas, streaming into other areas of our lives, or failure in just a lot of things compounding and making it be like oh i'm always a failure i always feel i always feel that's one of the reasons for self-doubt another reason for self-doubt is consistent disappointment you know when you've been consistently disappointed it could be disappointment in yourself it could be disappointment from others it could be disappointment just from the world in general some of us we are disappointed in our countries a lot of people will be like, my country has failed me. The economy has failed me. The government has failed me. Everything has failed me. Disappointment, like a consistent streak of disappointment, just like Snapchat. A consistent streak of disappointment is something that leads to self-doubt. 
because you you've been disappointed quite a number of times and one thing as humans is that once we get disappointed once our bodies our minds our bodies train our minds to build up this kind of self-defense system to say that oh i'm not going to get disappointed again you know that saying that says once bitten twice shy I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's the saying. That I'm very sure that's it. If I'm not sure, I would correct it on the screen. But yeah, because of disappointments, maybe you've been you've disappointed yourself. You've said, "Oh, I'm going to do this," and then you end up not doing it. So it's now like I shouldn't even try because the last time I said I was going to go to the gym, I ended up not going for about six months or even the entire twelve months in the year. I paid and I ended up not going. So now it's a new year. Who knows? Maybe you want to still lose weight. But because you disappointed yourself last year by not going to the gym when you said you wanted to go, it's now like that disappointment. This this is just an example, but that disappointment is like I'm doubting myself. Now I can't do this anymore. I'll just let it pass. Another reason for self-doubt is what people have said. Like, tell me about it. You know, if it's a hater that says something about you, you may not really take it to heart. But if it comes from friend, if it comes from family, it's most likely that if it's a subtle jab, it's going to it's going to hit home. Like it's enter very well. Let's say maybe um let me give an example. So I like to give examples so that you would really, really flow with what I'm saying. For example, the person that was going to make the aircraft, for example, when he was building it, the first thing, the first time he was building it, oh, I saw a video online. I saw a video online where, I don't know, that movie is on Netflix, but I don't know the movie, so I can't even look for the name or look for it and post it for you people to see, but I'm going to explain it. There was this guy, he was in his community, and he was saying that, oh, like he wants to, he had the idea of making a borehole system in such a way that when he puts something into the ground and winds like a fan or something it's going to make the ground be able to bring up water that was how the borehole system was innovated right so when he was talking about it his father had to like everybody was like what's this guy saying what's he doing what like what does he think he is well his father was not really seeing what he was trying to do so everybody was not buying into what he was doing, but the guy kept on persisting, kept on persisting. And in the end, he ended up innovating that borehole, right, for his community and like that everybody was happy. But when on the journey, nobody was believing in him that this guy was who he said he was or was going to do what he said he would do. And that just goes on to tell you that what people say about your dreams what people say about whatever you're headed for like especially the negative things it doesn't really matter it could be friends it could be family it could be haters like it doesn't really matter it doesn't it doesn't don't let it stop you one bit to the slightest because if you put your ears down to hear everything that people have to say about you <laughs> my dear you'll go nowhere like self-doubt as a result of what people say i say there are a lot of things that i would have wanted to do that if i had let what people say to stop me i would not be doing them people will always talk <laughs> even you that you are watching me you will always talk about people there will be times that we will talk about people and people will talk about us so what people have said is one of the reasons for self-doubt but don't let it get to you okay yeah, let me move on to the last point I'm going to give as a reason for self-doubt, which is insecurities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, insecurities. Oh, Lord. Insecurities. Maybe there are so many things that people are insecure about today. A lot and a lot, a myriad of things that you could be insecure about and those things could make you so, like self-sabotage doubt yourself maybe for example you're you're insecure about how you speak your dentition your laughter maybe you laugh like a generator like me <laughs> i'm just joking but maybe you laugh like in a way that is not conventionally acceptable or your nose is too big 
your eyes are too big your mouth is too big your ears are too big like there's just a lot of things or there are so many things if i talk about insecurities today i can even make a video on just insecurities if you want to see that video write it in the comments and tell me agnes i want to listen to you talk about insecurities and i'll make the video but yeah i don't want to turn this video into just talking about insecurities but insecurity is one of the reasons for self-doubt like just being insecure about who you are is one of the main causes of self-doubt and i feel like insecurities they could stem from the last point that i just gave what people said what you did things you went through things you've heard about yourself insecurities have their roots in those things or what society even thinks but yeah it's one of the reasons for self-doubt so now we're going to move on to the next part of this video and in this part of this video we are going to be talking about the effects of self-doubt number one destruction mm -hmm. when you doubt yourself you destroy a lot of things you destroy your dreams you destroy your ambition you lose your passion in fact i'm even listing a lot it's not just one point so just take all take all of it as the effect of self-doubt you self-destruct self-sabotage losing of your dreams losing of your passion losing your drive and you know like one thing that is so important when i studied psychiatry in 40 year, 50 year, what year did i study that course in med school when we were studying psychiatry one of the things that, like that is so important in the makeup of a man or a woman is w i l l will your will you see that will your willpower to say oh you still say i'm going to do i'm going to succeed at it i will succeed i will get it i will be who i say i want to be i will do what i say i want to do that is so powerful you telling yourself i will i can it is possible it is possible there is nothing that is impossible for me to achieve so far as i can think of it i can have it that mindset see i'm telling you you know this statement that goes around the lulu is the solulu i'm telling you be delusional be delusional about your dreams like till it manifests just be seeing it because see let me even bring this home. Let me bring this home. One of the classic examples of self-doubt, of someone who doubted the person's self so much in the Bible was Moses. You know when God called Moses and said, Moses, I want to send you. I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. Moses was like, Moses really, he really looked at God and said, who am I that you be sending me to, <laughs> to somebody like Pharaoh? Um, a lot of us today we are like that there are a lot of us that feel so unqualified we feel like we're not qualified to do the things that god is calling us to do maybe you don't really know the bible as you think you, sh you should know or you are not really born again like that according to you you are not really you you're not you don't have the aura of a pastor so because of that you don't want to serve god in the full capacity as he's drawing you to or you just doubt yourself so much. Me, I've been in those situ scenarios in my life because as I'm here like this, I lead a couple of things like in my day-to-day -day physical life. In my church, I'm the one who is in charge of home cells, like life groups. And I remember when I first started leading life groups, life groups are home cells where like, you know, um, the cell units of the church where they meet in different houses, different hostels for those who stay in the hostels yeah so as the one i was put in charge of that when the person who was graduating was graduating and at first when i started a lot of people were like because the person who was leading the life group before i have a video with him on this channel brother polycap i'm going to link that vi those videos here they are so good you can watch them but the person who was leaving his shoes were so big the shoes i had to fit into were so big because this is somebody that if he's preaching everybody just be like hey like he would literally you would literally 
know that someone is preaching in this room and that was the kind of space i had to step into so when i stepped into it of course you know when leadership is changing a lot of things will change the way he will handle situations is not how i handle situations and again the fact that he was way older than the people that he was leading for me we are like peers so it's different when you're leading your peers because the flow of authority hmm, are going deep the flow of authority when it's amongst people of the same age is kind of hard or it's harder than when it's authority flowing from someone who is way older to people who are younger do you understand because when you're speaking to your mates for example so most of them except from those who are mature will be like mm, what does she think she is what does she think she knows you know this kind of thing so for me at first when i started leading and i was now hearing some things like um about life groups and everything i went back to god in fact there was a day because before the life groups i would pray prepare prepare the sermons prepare things to share and just pray and pray and pray into the life groups like that was when i actually started leading so when i heard some talks like it threw me off balance so much and i i was so hurt i was like ah these people don't know this is not all like this is not all the people in my life group my life group people are very lovely this was just like some drops of you know so i was like ah i was like these people don't know how much i i prepare i pray i do this i do this so at the point i was hurt in my heart towards the life group and everything so i couldn't really like be effective in my service again so i had to go back to god and tell god that god it's you it's you that said i should pick up this thing if not you know me very well that i would not take up a responsibility if not ask me to pick and i spoke to some like some of my mentors people that were way older than me and they spoke to me and just encouraged me and told me about somebody reminded me of bishop adeboye enoch how when he first like started leading rccg a lot of people left the church because he was young so that thing just gave me like a boost to say oh you're not going to be for everybody do you understand not everybody is going to be able to relate not everybody is going to be able to relate with the message that you preach so i just focused on the people who were consistently coming for live groups and i like put in my heart and continue doing what God had asked me to do and to the glory of God like the life groups just went from from like and I was like whoo it's good to trust God so basically no matter what no matter your qualifications if God calls you to do something your sufficiency is found in him hmm that's a word your sufficiency is found in him your confidence comes from him it stems from him on your inside you can do all things not by yourself but through christ on your inside i'm a believer so if you're listening to this video it's not just going to be just tips just tips so guys i realized that um when i was recording the video stopped recording at this point you guys pray for me i need more space <laughs> so yes as I was saying, like talking about Moses and him being qualified, doubting that he was qualified to do the work of God, it all stemmed from self-doubt as I was explaining in the previous parts of the video. But one thing I want us to take out from this video is that, like just as I said, your sufficiency, you being enough, you knowing that you can do all things, it's not just by your own abilities alone it is by christ on your inside and also another thing i would have loved to say before the video ended was that those things that make you doubt yourself when you identify the triggers if it is people if it is some certain spaces whatever it is try to avoid those triggers and not just avoid them also like work on your mindset 
work on how you see yourself. If it means you like putting out affirmations, telling yourself you can do those things, you can be who you say you want to be, you can succeed in the rooms you say you're going to succeed in, then it is possible because what you think about yourself really, really matters and it matters how you see you, it matters how you perceive yourself. So don't doubt yourself. If there is a goal, if there is a dream in your heart, know that you can get it and know that it is achievable, it is possible. You understand me? Yeah. So guys, this year I want to hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and you can help me do that if you share this video. If you know you found value in the video and you watched it up until this point, please share the video, okay? Share it and also like the video so that YouTube recommends it to more people. And if possible, leave a comment. It could be an emoji, anything, please, okay? Thank you so much for watching the video. And I love you guys. Until my next video, bye and see you.